as we watch that, I know the emotions were high. It's a gruesome picture. And that's just a depiction of what Jesus truly endured for us. Just a small portrait of what our minds could come up with about what he endured on an old rugged cross. Blood stained. Upon that, he carried our sin and our shame. Tonight, just for a little bit, I'm not, I'm not gonna talk long because the story of the cross speaks for itself. But for a little minute, I wanna talk about nailed to the cross. Nailed to the cross. See, each one of you, when you came in, got a nail. And that nail had a small little painted area to represent blood. It's not the nail that was drove into Jesus' wrist or the bone and sinew of his feet, that, that isn't the same type of nail, but it's a very good representation of the nail that he endured. You see, when Jesus did what he did by being nailed to a cross, he took every single thing, all our sin, all our shame, all our heartbreak, all our, all our pain, everything he took, he carried it with him. He carried it to the cross. He did so willingly. You know, as I began to think about this message, I actually originally thought about going in a different direction, and I thought about who really killed Jesus? Was it the Pharisees who cried, crucify, crucify? Was it Pilate who ultimately gave the order? Was it the guardsmen that he turned them over to? Was it the people who shot at the loudest for him to be crucified? Was it you? Was it I? Was it our sin and shame? Did we crucify Jesus? You know, the truth is, we didn't. None of them did. The truth is that no one took Jesus' life. Jesus said, I lay it down willingly. He laid down his life for you and me. He laid it down so that we could be children so that we could have a relationship with God. I love when, when it shows that there's a clip and I couldn't quite get it, but at the end, when Jesus says, it is finished. The Bible says that when he uttered those three words, the whole world shook. That graves literally opened and dead people got up and began to walk around the city. The veil in the temple was torn in half. And that's symbolic for us because that means we no longer need anyone to take us into the throne room of God, but we can go ourselves. Jesus loved us that much to be nailed. Nailed. Now a nail is truly a wondrous thing. A nail has been around for thousands and thousands of years. And technology has at no point 
changed the nail. It is still the same. It is still the same today. You see, a nail pierces. Whether you're dealing with wood or even concrete, a nail has a way of getting through things. No matter what the pain or the suffering you, are have, you have or you are enduring, the nail can pierce it today. The second thing it does is a nail binds. The nail binds. Today, you're gonna, or tonight rather, you're gonna have an opportunity to take that paper that you've been writing on all night and you're gonna nail those feelings, those hurts, those pains, all of those things that you have written on your paper, you are going to nail it to the cross and the, that nail is going to bind it to the cross and once it is bound, See, a nail is something you use when you don't want something to come apart. See, you use a screw when you might want to move something, when you might have to do it over again. That's when you use a screw because a screw allows you to take it out. But see, when you nail something, and I know this because I've had to put down a floor and take up nails that they had in concrete, it's very difficult to get those nails out. It, it takes some work. Because a nail is meant to bind things. And tonight you are going to bind those hurts and those pains to a cross where Jesus paid it off. When he said it was finished, it didn't mean just at that moment. It meant it is finished in past, present, and future tense. <coughs> it is finished. Now, then, and forevermore. The nails that were in his hand and his feet. They represent three things, I believe. They represent his victory over death. For the Bible says that when he went into that tomb, he actually went into hell itself and he took the keys of hell from the devil. He defeated death. He defeated Satan, second death. His defeat over Satan means Satan has no power over us. The Bible says if God is for us, who can be against us? The third nail, I believe, defeated separation. Because before Jesus did this, we were separated from God. There was a vast chasm between us and God that we couldn't cross. But when Jesus gave up his life, he removed that. And he brought us back into communion with God. He made the choice ours when he died that day. He made the choice <coughs> ours. See, before then, we didn't have a choice. We were a fallen people because of Adam. But Jesus gave us a choice that day. And tonight, some of you here, you have the choice. You may not have never or ever given your life to Jesus. You may have never accepted the sacrifice that he paid. But I stand here to tell you what you <coughs> saw on those films today. Hollywood might have done it, but I guarantee you it was much worse than even Hollywood could come up with. What he was willing to endure and pay for you, it was because he counted you worthy. He counted you the most precious gift ever. And tonight, all you have to do is accept it. It's that simple. All you have to do is accept that Jesus loved you that much. Accept that he cared about you that much. For those of us who are already, who have already accepted the Lord and who already love him, we know we carry around the pain. We know we carry around the shame. We carry around those hurts. Tonight at the foot of this cross or at this cross, you're gonna nail those things. You're gonna nail it. You're gonna bind it to the cross forever. You're not gonna leave this cross and take it back to, with you. You're gonna leave it nailed right to a blood-stained cross. Leave it where God wants you to leave it. And walk away knowing that he already paid the price so that you can walk in freedom.
so that you can walk in freedom. So as Noah begins to give us some instrumental music, <coughs> there will be some nails and some hammers. You have the opportunity today to nail all of your troubles to the cross.
bound to a cross. And the same words that Jesus said when he gave up his last breath, it is finished. It is finished. It is finished. <coughs> the devil will no longer use these things to pull you down. It is finished. You have let it go. It is finished. God is that loving. And God cares that much. It, of all the days and nights, no other shows his love for us as much as tonight does. Because it just truly shows how much he really loves us. And I know, and I, and I feel it, I'm sorry, I'm going to get down. But I feel like there's some of you here who doubt how much you are truly loved by God. You doubt if you're even loved by God, if God even cares about you, if God even knows you exist. You doubt that very thing. You may come to church, and you may be here, but in your heart of hearts, you still wonder, does he really care about me? Does he really care about me? The answer is yes. God loves you more than you will ever know. And you may think, but you don't know what I've done in my life. You don't know the kind of things I've gotten into in my life. But I'm here to tell you, God does not care. Because when he looks at you, all he sees is his child. That's all he sees. He loves you. And I don't know who that, who's that, that's for tonight, but I just want you to know God loves you. And he cares. And he knows exactly where you are. He knows exactly how you feel. And he's using me to reach out to you tonight and, and hear his voice <coughs> saying, I love you. We're going to close this time in prayer. Lord, I thank you right now for the sacrifice. I thank you that, Lord God, that the work you started, you finished so completely. That the, your sacrifice, Lord God, would require no other sacrifice. That it was perfect. And you loved us enough, Lord God, to make that sacrifice. <laughs> God, for all of those under the sound of my voice, Lord God, let them soak in your love tonight. Let them see how much you, you loved us so unconditionally that not even your child was too much for us. Then God, as they've laid down all their hurts, their pain, their anger, Lord God, as they nailed it to the cross, God, I pray that it is no more. I pray that you are putting the, the soothing balm upon their souls and their hearts right now that you were healing them from the inside out, Lord. God, I thank you right now for what you have done for us. In the mighty name of Jesus.